96, 97, I remember. By that moment, I was working in the, uh, in the academic network. Uh, well, we were teaching one of the first uh, courses on, J on Java, etc. And Java, right now, Java is something very normal. You're used to, to programming Java. You're used to programming uh, in Python, for example. Java brought uh, something that was very important. It was not precisely original. Java was something that was uh, happened some time ago as well. I mean, it, so it was somehow... Well, it was a reduction of what small talk, for example, was. And it was a transformation to, uh, to for normal programmers, not uh, complete mathematicians of, uh, of what uh, just modular, modular, whatever. I don't remember the, the full name. It was as well. But Java brought something that was very important. It was a different way of thinking for programmers. The curious thing is that by that moment, people thought people were thinking that Java was, was going to bring a kind of transformation that was not exactly the one that, uh, that happens at the end. I mean, Java changed the world of programming, but changed it in the way, in, not in the way that the people were envisaging by that moment. My impression is that here, with SDM, with NFV, with all these kind of techniques, we are witnessing the same. There's a change in the way in which we can think about networks but not necessarily, and this is a warning, don't blame me that uh, if, uh, in, in five years' time things are not exactly what I'm going to tell you today. <laughs> My conviction is that these things are going to change, they are going, going to change dramatically, we are only set up to, uh, to witness in the, the change, but what will happen is something that, well, who knows, if I knew it, I want to be in a right now telephonia, I will be running my startup and making my or preparing for me. So, just to start with, uh, the network, the network and the ossification. Ossification is a, is a term that was, became popular uh, mostly by the people that invented SDN, precisely about this idea that for them, and this started precisely inside the university, because some people found that for them it was extremely complicated uh, to test and to, and to, and to uh, research a new network features. Taking into account that most of the network and not the network equipment they were they, they had access to was like that. It was uh, monolithic, it was based on a specialized hardware, the control planes were very much uh, uh, focused on, on, those, uh, on those hardware pieces and uh, with features that were very, very, very much dedicated. And uh, with standardization beyond <coughs> And this is, a, this is a personal, and this is probably a, li a little bit against many of the committees in which my company is participating. But uh, the standardization will be beyond the limits of all the standard sheet. Uh, if you take uh, the example of you know, a, a power plug, a power plug has, has to need uh, a, 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 some uh, matters for standardization, that are how the uh, pins are defined, the size of the pins, the distance between the pins, etc. But in, in networks right now, we are specifying not only that, we are specifying the color, we are specifying the uh, precise material, we are specifying the length of the cable. And that, that doesn't make any sense. That is, originally it has good reasons, and the, and the example here is something that I personally think that is uh, the perfect example of over standardization, that is a 3 dpp We can discuss about that in another moment. This is not that. And uh, the point is that there is a... Very, the, the industry was, and it is, still very reluctant to change. Not only operators. Normally, they, 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 what is fashionable is operators, teleco, teleco operators, uh, telephonica, BT, whoever, now nah, well, they are monsters, they don't move. It's not only the industry, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's as well, the, uh, it's not only that the operators, it's the vendors, for the vendors, the market is very comfortable, and it's something that is even more. It's the regulators. For regulators, things are very clear, very easy right now. Um, what is this? It's because there is a path of, of lowest resistance for, for all of us. Think about, it comes from a, from a, from a professor precisely here from the UPC that we were discussing all this and this, this drawing is originally made by him, but uh, well, he's not here any longer, but uh, he's uh, in, working for Cisco, uh, Marcelo Janitor. Yeah. I guess you, some of, them, of you know him. So the idea is that uh, he's, he's all thinking about how the network landscape is right now. Which is a disaster, as I said, there a dystopia in the sense that what you have is completely separate components of knowledge and concern. What you have is people that are thinking they are the mobile guys, they are the management guys, 
the, uh, the uh, internet routing guys, they are the guys that are dealing with uh, services, etc. The, the security on our. And this is something that if you think and you translate it to, uh, to the landscape of computing, could be like this, which is something that happened very, very a long time ago, but it's not happening any longer. Think about the, the, the audio guy, only concerned about the, uh, how sound would work, would be the uh, printer specialist, only concerned about the printing and the, and the printing mechanisms of the people that would know about uh, hard drives or the people who know only about Wi-Fi. Completely separate, separate of, separation of concern, separation of, uh, of, of knowledge, separation of expertise, which is what we were talking before, the uh, mainframe approach. Because this is what happens. I, again, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when there were computing centers, there is a guy who was operating the printer and the guy who was operating the, uh, the screens. And they, they, they were different and they had no idea. The solution, I mean, the solution in the end, uh, in the, uh, in the computing space came back by using virtualization. Basically, what you do is that you have drivers, essentially, which are, which are software constructs that are, connect, are connecting you with different access technologies, if you like, that emulate or that provide an abstracted view of the hardware to a common layer that is in charge of scheduling, solving conflicts, assigning resources, and satisfying the request of applications. So, what we're talking about is following something similar, not necessarily, not necessarily the same. I mean, it's not that we are proposing that we will build a, a, a network-wide operating system. Take well, that could be a, a possibility, but it's not necessarily, but it's the analogy tried to illustrate that the mechanisms around the idea of, uh, of uh, virtualizing of Adding layers of abstraction, hiding the complexity, is something that is, should be desired, or should be the way in which we should uh, move, or we are trying to move in, in the metro space. And for sure, for that work, what we do need is a business plan. I mean, something that is a clear reason for people in the industry to invest in it. Or at least, for those in the industry that are in, are in the position of buying, spending money that the end is the, the ones that will be pulling the others uh, to move. So uh, for, for, for operators and even for users, and this is something that there is a, one, one of the things here very important is that you create a continuum of, of, of network users, including the, the operators themselves. The operator starts in, a, in this environment, think about the operator becomes a little bit like the super user in, a, in an operating system. We're talking about users that are on top of the network and well, there is a super user that is in charge of making things uh, work more or less. Well, basically it's a, a, a attack heterogeneity. Networks are super heterogeneous and the idea is that you can build the whole infrastructure as a pool of uh, general resources. The possibility is of providing a functionality on demand is and this is right now, whenever you want to, to deploy something on the network, you have to deploy it for the whole network. And this is extremely expensive and doesn't justify precisely addressing, um, which is the long tail. Uh, the, the number of users that are scattered around, there are not that many, they are interested, and you cannot address this long tail because whenever you want to address them, you have to deploy the, the thing for the whole network. With the exception, for sure, of the big corporations. The big corporations can afford to be in the long term. Uh, updating the infrastructure. Updating the infrastructure is right now is a, is a real pain. It implies a lot of physical uh, movement. It implies a lot of physical actions. And it implies a lot of uh, a very high carbon footprint. Think about that. We have made a study in Brazil, precisely in which we have made a big uh, pilot uh, for, for virtualization and the, uh, the reduction of the carbon footprint derived from uh, the trucks moving from, the, uh, from our central offices to the uh, users' homes was of 60%. And we don't have anything, everything virtualized. It's, it's about the updates, the possibility, and this is something that is a, the continuous complaint of many in the, in the current network service providers is that the Googles, the Facebooks, the Netflix are much more agile when it comes to updating things. So it is that you just update the software image. It's not that you have to go 
buy a different box from Cisco, buy a different box from Huawei and make the change and retrain people is something that should be much. Uh, um, and the most important thing, you can automate things much heavier, in a, in a much heavier way than we do right now. You can, uh, in software image configuration, you can replicate everything in a much easier way. You just copy, reconfigure, deploy. So that's, that translates into in three things that are extremely important for us, which are the business uh, drivers, which is flattening the uh, I guess you know what CapEx and over it is. Because when I, I changed uh, from Renee uh, to Telefonic a few years ago, this is one of the first things I had to learn. I remember being sat sit in, a, in a meeting with my boss and all of some other and I said, the CapEx, the OPEX. What, what are you talking about? And I was supposed to be being hired by, as an expert, so I could not ask, you know. So this is when Google becomes really your friend. <laughs> and, uh, and something more important is because it's shortening the, the, the time to market. Shortening the time to market, right now, the cycle in the, uh, in the, um, in the telco industry is about 10 years, between 5 and 10 years. So if you have an idea, tell you, have a, you can make some money out of this. The cycle right now <clears throat> in the internet, if you go beyond 9 months, you're doomed. You're, you're doomed. So we are trying to replicate it before we go completely out of the market. So, uh, by the way, Whatever you want to ask, whatever you want to comment, whatever disagreement or agreement you want to express, please do. I tend to speak very, very fast and too much. So, but don't be, <laughs> don't feel like, a, don't feel like a, 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 I don't know, overwhelmed by my, by, by the, uh, by the flow, please. Because otherwise, at the end, I, I have to be back uh, down there at the, uh, at, the, at, the, at the open stack uh, place at uh, three. So it's, uh, it's going to be a. It's going to be a rush, so please interrupt me. I prefer, <clears throat> I have 30 of these, so uh, I prefer rather than go through the 30 of these, if we can enter in a, in a discussion, I think it's, it would be better for all of us. So basically, uh, the, the two concepts and the two origins, uh, uh, original concepts in which uh, the uh, software network revolution, so to say, is NFV. NFV stands for Network Function Virtualization that is essentially about separating functionality from capacity is, is nothing new, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's making the networks uh, cloud-like. So the idea is that you have virtual network functions, pieces of, uh, of software that are running, running the network functions, running on top of, a, of a regular infrastructure, not necessarily, I mean, cloud-like, but not necessarily exactly like the cloud, uh, uh, the cloud data centers we know today, but regular infrastructure that can be managed by software and, and do all the functions are implemented by software so you can move things around. So it's about function here, capacity there, with the idea of network elasticity and heterogeneity, addressing heterogeneity. And well, providing other, other very, very nice uh, uh, properties that, for example, yesterday there was a very impressive demonstration of, in the, um, the OpenStack uh, summit of the uh, People are doing a, a project that is called BNF, and they, what they were showing is how you can cut. I mean, they physically, you know, this is it was very, uh, very dramatic old show. There was the guy, the uh, C, uh, CTO of NEC, if I remember well. He was making an, a main came with a big, uh, a big cutter, and there was a big, uh, there was this uh, flashy uh, a yellow and an orange uh, cables just to, to be seen. And he was in a conversation, and without having this virtualized, having a single service, cutting the cable mean, meant that the conversation was ended. Then he started with a virtualized environment, he, cut, he, he uh, cut off another cable, and then the conversation continued. Because there was a, there was a, a, a complete uh, a re instantiation of the whole thing. Well, the conversation continues. The, the thing, and the guy was extremely good at that, and said the conversation continues after two or three seconds. So it was, it was, you know, it was really dramatic because in a certain moment there was a silence again, and everybody was expecting that the thing was going to fail, and they managed it in a, in a really impressive way. I was looking, uh, uh, while coming here, I was looking for what they have put it in YouTube just to show it to you, but I'm sorry, I could not find it. I'm not sure if it is, or they are waiting for the end of the, uh, of the summit. Of it. So this is when it comes to NFE, and this is SDN. SDN, in fact, SDN predates NFE, and they are here in this order just because of, I don't know, 
probably alphabetical or whatever. But <coughs> SDN, what SDN does is that the couples control for forwarding. It is that the network is about moving things, moving data around. So forwarding is essential. And you move those data around because you control, you, you define how you how you move this through the app. So it is that you see it separates control for forwarding in two different uh, set of elements. And you connect the forwarding applications, sorry, the controlling applications to the forwarding element, to the forwarding resources, using something that is called the controller. Which is a little bit misleading because you, you would understand that the controller is controlling, but the controller right now, originally it was the case, but currently the controller is a, an adaptation layer, it's not only like the operating system mediating between the applications that define the network and the uh, and everything here is open and standard. So you can connect here whatever the elements and you can put here whatever the uh, uh, the controller and they should be uh, able to do. What do you have? What do you have most of all of all you have programmability and abstraction. You move in the direction of what you before precisely all uh, being being able to um, uh, being able to um, see the network in different as, uh, different abstraction layers that allows you to precisely uh, decide which are the details you want to, to you want to expose or you want exposed, so you can make decision in that and, and you can manage the network as a consistent resource. That is probably and this is very important. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, when it comes to, to SDN, and, and, and as, uh, as I said before, SDN is a little bit, uh, happened a little bit earlier, or the, uh, well, basically naming it SDN happened a little bit earlier than naming the other thing uh, NFV. So, the idea is that the evolution is that instead of having black boxes, places to which you attach your cable, they become open in the sense that they are controlled by an open interface that originally was open flow, now things are changing a little bit in that respect, but basically that's the basic protocol. <clears throat> you have a fully set of autonomous boxes, and there is a fully set of uh, signs and, and algorithms here to coordinate those autonomous boxes. And you transform them in, a, in, a, in an environment in which decisions are taken out of the box. Not necessarily that the boxes or that you cannot have a distributed architecture. This is something that very often is a, is a, is a very common criticism again against the, uh, the idea of SDN that SDN is too centralized, that there is a central resource that is slow, that is, uh, uh, that is not resilient, etc. The idea is that the important thing here is that you have a common plane that adapts between what is controlling the network, what is programming the network, and the, uh, the other elements. These elements are not allowed to take the so you can have here one, <coughs> one hundred. It's up to you. But you put, place them in a in a different uh, uh, location. And something that for us, I mean, for us operators, is very important. You cannot imagine the horrible mess that is network management right now in any in any network service providers, because you have different boxes that are autonomous that are provided by different uh, vendors, different versions. You cannot consistently buy because. Life is a, a, as it is. So you have your management system is full of hacks, adapters, pieces of software that uh, transform what you have here to what you have there, and then they inform here that they, what you have changed in the other. They are extremely complicated. I don't know. I don't have it here, but I, but they have a the map. The, what, the, what the people in my my colleagues dealing with network management call the system map, and the system map is a, is a well, for me it's a mess. It is a mess of uh, around, uh, if I remember well, 500 different things in the connection. And ours is one of the simplest ones. If you go, to, for example, to what at and is running or NTT or whatever it is, it's curious to see. So the idea is to simplify that, and if, since you have applications, you have a single, because this becomes managing the application. For sure, I'm not saying that this is the, the solution. The, at the end, you will have idiosyncrasies, you will, you will have dialects, you will have uh, versions, you have maintainability problems. But the kind of adapters that you have to build there are much easier 
and mostly much more flexible. And the idea is that you have a, 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 at least one additional degree of freedom to, uh, uh, to organize what you do. When it comes to NFE, when it comes to NFE, what you have is, uh, is a set of, uh, of structures, <coughs> different level of structures that allow you to build network services as a connected graph of different functions that are implemented in the software, attached to two points in the network, that those, uh, those uh, elements that we call it uh, VNF, VNF is nothing. It's, a, it's part of the jokes of, of, the jokes of being uh, in the, the NFV group is that then you start to, because we have not found, we have not found yet what an NVF would be, but it's just a matter of time, because you have NFV that is based on VNFs, and this makes things, and then you have the VNFM, and things are, whatever has the F, the N, and the V, it's something that uh, probably will be co-shared NFV, so that's a, I warn you. So the idea is that you, what you do is that you define a network service as a connection of those VNFs. You're managing these uh, instances. The important thing is that these, these are virtual instances and they are supposed to be running on on a virtualized infrastructure and these VNFs are like cloud applications. It is that you can scale them up, <coughs> out, scale them in, scale them up, move them around, migrate them, do the kind of things that you can do right now with cloud. So what you have is that the network service becomes adaptable, becomes elastic, becomes, uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, suitable for being uh, <coughs> managed in a completely different way. Originally, uh, the uh, SDN and NFV were originally separated. There was a certain, uh, and I have witnessed that, and I have participated in a several discussions about that, SDN guys believe originally that the, well, that the real thing was SDN. SDN was the way of, the way of making abstraction, permeability, etc. And that uh, basically, uh, that basically NFE was an implementation technique. NFE was, uh, was like, uh, I don't know, if you, are, if you are developing a web server and you think, well, the real thing is my web server. Whether you deploy it in, in a cloud or you deploy it in a in a dedicated server file. That's not matter. On the other hand, uh, people from NFE look at uh, uh, SDN as an enabling technology. SDN was required to build the uh, network connecting the different DNFs, but no more. And so, well, they have been separated because they don't, didn't appear at the same time as the end was, let's say, it's a one couple of years old, or three years older than, than, than the NFE concept. <coughs> but, uh, well, uh, for those of us who who were lucky or unlucky enough to, to be forced to work in both at the same time, we found very early that it was they are intimately related, they are very much connected, and right now things are evolving in that direction. The, the, the founders of the, uh, of the SDN ideas they, that were structured around something called the Open Networking Foundation now are precisely trying to work in, on, on anything. And the people that originally thought that the NFV, uh, SDN should be pushed down the stack in, in NFV, just providing a proper abstraction about the networks, are now thinking about how to provide SDN control for the DNS. So uh, well, the, the fact is that, um, though theoretically you can do NFV without SDN, I mean, you can do, and we have done that. I mean, we, we have made deployments of, of uh, NFV using VLANs, for example. You just use the VLAN, and depending who you attach, I mean, which functions you attach to the VLAN, you, have, you can build the, the chains, it's extremely difficult. It's complicated, it's limited. Uh, for example, if you're using VLANs, you are limited to have only uh, 1,024 <coughs> VLANs, and, and, and so the combinations that you can build for the, for the chains, etc., is very much limited. <coughs> And that most of the ESDN use cases, originally, normally I said here, most of the ESDN use cases outside of the data center. But even those inside the data center have to deal somehow to an FE, to providing virtualized network functions that can migrate inside the uh, infrastructure. So and this is something, as I said before, that is being recognized by the community, that is something that is uh, uh, there is a need of convergence, there is a need of a common understanding, there is an, a need of uh, studying how these uh, interactions can happen. 
you three that are there standing, probably they do. I know it's very uncomfortable, but you could sit here and, and, and hate me a little bit less. Please. Um, finally, there is, a, as, as I said before, is the idea that there is a one single realm. We have started, or some of us have started to, to generate proper networks. I'm not sure that it's going to be uh, uh, successful because I don't know if it's really become sexy enough for people to use it. But the idea is to forget about SDN, NFV, and whatever comes after because something, something else or some new uh, fancy terms. Probably you have heard about something called MEC, MEC. Uh, which is uh, multi uh, originally was mobile edge computing, but now they call it multi access edge computing. So that, that would be the third term, and there could be uh, another term. So, so the idea we are trying to push for the idea that to use uh, software software networks in the in the community. That's it. Something that is important when you think about software network is about precisely that this combination implies an, a natural application. So it is that originally, forget about this, originally the mission that the people working with NFV had was facilities. There is an underlying SDN, which is infrastructure. SDN is providing essentially a virtual company. So it is that you can plug and unplug and, and replug one function to the other or one component of a function to the other without in a, in a, in a seamless and a programmable way. And on top of that, you had your, your NFV, your NFV running on, on the uh, <coughs> on the virtual asset infrastructure and relying precisely on this capability of virtual plane. But as I said before, something that was essential as well was precisely start thinking about the service layers, something that would be controlling this because once you make the deployment, you have a set of, of functions running and you have to control them. You can control them the classical way, but then you don't have any, you have gained not that much in that case, and you have to provide precisely what I, what I said before. What, what we have termed here service layer at the end. Again, this is not uh, a, a very much a great term, and probably you will find uh, there are now uh, some uh, schools of thought, so one which is um, uh, led by AT&T precisely, and they talk here about network orchestration or something. Well, the idea is that you have an SDN, uh, SDN capabilities that allows you not, not to control the, lo the lower layers from work for all the elements, but the functions that you have. The important thing here, and this is something that is, uh, it is worth noting, is that this sandwich can be stacked as many times as you want. You Theoretically, you could run here and run on top of this. Since this provides you uh, an SDN view, you could run some other DNS. And you can put us an SDN layer on top of that. Whether that makes sense or not remains to be seen. Before anyone says, ah, no, this is not going anywhere, that remains to be seen. But take into account that, for example, in right now in 5G, uh, probably you have heard about the term slice, yeah. the uh, 5G slices. Precisely, the idea of a slice that is uh, one of the ideas that is consolidating thinking out here is that here you would have the network functions corresponding to the network operation, and here you would have the network functions corresponding to the business layers. So at least in the uh, in the um, in the uh, in the five G environment, we will be talking about two uh, <laughs> two, words. Two, two two things or two sandwiches on top of one of the other. <clears throat> Don't think, and this is also something important, this is, we're talking about abstraction and we're talking software. We are not talking here about things. Because something when you, when you tell this to the, to the people that are used to, to think in terms of the network boxes, but the thing is, ah yes, the Cisco box, and on top of it, uh, the a controller that is going to be a Dell box, and on top of it, a Huawei box that it will be hosting. No, 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 no. Everything will be running on the same infrastructure. It's the relationship and the kind of abstraction and the kind of access that you will have to the set to the different uh, functions. There will be no difference between a DHCP and uh, I don't know, an industry um, industry uh, which is industry 4.0 um, optimizer. There will be PCs, virtual machines or, or containers running on infrastructure. The point is that 
the, the, the guy providing the services from the DOC for zero will only see the manipulations he can make on that optimizer that will then request services to the, uh, to the other. We're talking functional. We're talking even, even going uh, further, there are people proposing things like dealing with all the things they're talking about the object-oriented network and having about the, the full network full of objects and what you have are methods that you involve. involve. Again, this is a thing, take into account as well, that we're talking about control here. We're not talking data for Data for only happens here. In some cases, you are going through them to, uh, because they are, they are uh, in the case of uh, the NAT, for example, or the, uh, the rubber, you're, you're forwarding packets through them. But the, the basic data for only happens, happens here. Again, the point is that at the end, having a, a computer, Electricity is always going through the same paths, but those electric signals mean things completely different at the, at the different structure layer. This is something that, let me say, it's something that is not well understood, and that includes, I mean, that includes myself and many others. And I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not well understood by you because you are you are lay uh, you are laymen and lay women and then that's respect. No, I'm, I'm saying simply that it's something that we are starting to understand right now. The same way, let me say is that thinking in terms of objects, for people that were used to write a, a, a code in C, Pascal, or even C++, because whatever you have been told, C++ is not object-oriented, uh, C++ is a, is a pile of hacks on top of C, that is a lovely language, C++ is a So the, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, um, well, it's, it's the same, thinking in terms of objects, thinking in terms of, uh, of uh, concurrent threads, thinking in terms of the, of the constructs that Java uh, uh, brings you, is something that you have to get used to. It takes time. And the whole community has to get used to. So, basically, this is, uh, this is the idea in the long term that we have precisely of how you could, we could move in that direction. So you have, uh, uh, here, this is a pile of things combined, but basically, um, well, I, I will give you the slides, you can analyze it, you, you, you will, can, can contact me if you have any question about this. Uh, just for the sake of brevity, let's uh, not go into detail. But the idea, if you look at it, is that uh, you have here the elements that are doing the forwarding, and here you have a traffic interface. You could, I mean, we're not talking about forgetting about, first, we're not talking about forgetting any knowledge, the same way that that the fact that there are people right now that are able to deal with databases and optimizing queries doesn't imply that there are no people that knows about how to build a disk. The problem is that the number of people that has to know that have to know how to build a disk and manage a disk is very small. You have more people that know how to maintain and construct a database. And you have a huge number of people that know what well, huge. You have a much huge number than those others uh, of people that can <coughs> uh, build applications running on the database. And they have no idea of how to do that. But they can run a database. And they have no idea of how to optimize first, but they can. And, and, and this is the same, the same kind of, constru of, of construct. You will have for sure a traffic interface, you will have, the, you will have a set of drivers and a set of, uh, of, uh, of structure. This, uh, up to this, this is very similar to what you can see now in the, uh, uh, in the modern uh, controller frameworks like Open Daylight or Onos or whatever. What you have on top of that is a set of what we started to call kernel or, an, or ancillary functions. Those are, we are certainly making functions here. So you have uh, the cloud management system, you have the SDN controller, that are virtual functions as well. Don't forget about that. Everything is software. The same that you will have a function that will be doing, I don't know, fireballing, you will have a function that will be controlled. But they are part of the kernel. They are normally not accessed. With the exception of a very, very well-defined app, they are not uh, accessed by anyone. Then you have, the, uh, let's say, the libraries, the system libraries, the things that you have right now, AAA, that is basic uh, uh, service function for holding, management, the, the whole SDN framework for uh, topology, analytics, etc. And on top of that, you have whatever functions that can be forwarding, control management, whatever. 
we tried to make an analogy, which is precisely in a, in a, in a operating system environment, this is more or less similar to the death zone, this is more or less similar to the kernel zone, this is more or less similar to the lip zone, you have common, common levels and the levels. The idea is that then you can start thinking, if you start applying these models, you can start thinking about precisely an operating system structure, derive the previous experience from operating system and try to apply here to network management and network relation. You can start thinking about IDEs, you can think about using a case to play with the network and play with properties on the network. You can start by not uh, applying the machine learning should be here. To say, I, I, I mean, it's a, it's a, I prefer to call it computational intelligence. But this is another, another story. And you can start thinking of something that is the, the dream. I mean, the dream and the nightmare of many operators is about doing, making DevOps. Being able that the same people that are developing new features will be able to operate them. And you will operate the network by programming it, by installing new versions, by making changes continuously to the uh, So, uh, some first steps we are taking, I mean, what me, we, I mean, we, Telefonica, these are the projects that we are running <coughs> right now. This is one that uh, we have started uh, one year ago, and we are rather um, proud of it. This is an open source community, which is called OSN, Open Source Mano. Mano, Mano is the product of the uh, fact that the uh, two people that were in charge of defining some terms inside the uh, TNT were a lady from uh, Bolivia, that is in Valencia, and just friendly. So when we had to talk about management and operation, we decided it was going to be called Mano. It's just management and operations. And, so. and then when you explain it, or it says a hand Spanish, and that you can use it uh, as, a, as, a sim, uh, as a something to represent how you manage and handle things. But, it works. So the idea is open, open man is, a, is an open source implementation of the uh, of the management and operations uh, uh, stack that is required by Etsy for, for managing NFP. And the idea is that it, it works, it try to demonstrate how software principles can be applied from the very beginning, from when you start defining a function, and that you can do it in, a, in an integrated way based on, on a, on a mobile-based uh, a, a mobile approach. You start with a set of data models that define what you have to learn, and you can keep moving them from your uh, development <coughs> environment to a, a test environment to, the, uh, to a production environment. And this is the seed for supporting DevOps. We can support DevOps right now. I mean, the few guys in Telefonica Research and other companies that are working on that can support DevOps. Something else is that the management of Telefonica would be happy about having DevOps right now on the network. There's something that I'm not sure. So, and the, uh, the idea is that we, uh, we are trying to, <coughs> something that is very important is something that we want to apply is to avoid ossification, which is something that is is about trying to avoid to follow a too rigid architecture. What we are trying to standardize and demonstrate, and this is something that's not here, but it's the architecture of Mano, what we are trying to mandate are only the data models that are exchanged by the different parts. Whether you use a, a, a component or another, whether you're using, for example, something, this lays on top of the cloud management system. Whether you're using VMware, you're using OpenStack, uh, you're using uh, Open Nebula, you're using, in theory, it should be easily adapted because the only thing that you're requiring is that the data models are consistent. So you can plug and plug for sure. There, there, there is a need of uh, some uh, effort in development, you have to write code, but it's the only thing you have to do. You don't have to access to any arcane secrets that are kept by a uh, <coughs> uh, chip manufacturer. It, um, iterated development environment, our idea originally, this is something that has changed with time, but originally our idea was to precisely build something originally that was called Netflix. Then we, we found that, uh, so the idea is to, it, it was to build something that would allow to develop the network and the application using the network at the same time. Defining how you wanted to connect uh, the different nodes, defining how you wanted to, uh, 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 to provide properties for that, for those connections. At the same time, you were developing the application and seeing how changes in the properties of the connection 
could enhance or, or, or the other way around or worsen the, uh, uh, the, uh, the applications. That is something, again, in the current days of the client server architecture, in the current days of a few connections, because, well, the, you know, I have a LAN and then I have the uh, main, uh, my, my cloud and that's all. It's something that probably put some, uh, put some a little bit uh, as over But if you start thinking about IoT, you start thinking of billion of, set of systems connected, you start thinking about hundreds of thousands of different potential services being provided, many, many different data paths for aggregating data for analytics and, and uh, machine learning and things like that, then having a way of fine-tuning what you're doing with the network and the possibility of doing so, because right now the only thing is that you have a link, you drop data there and you forget about that. Having the possibility of doing so opens a lot of possibilities that we have to explore. And uh, something that I have in mind now is I'll get back to, uh, to it there. So, uh, with that in mind, we studied this and we soon realized that one of the problem that, uh, problems that we have is that in most IDEs, one of the advantages you have is that you can, you can develop each module in the language you feel like. You can develop them in Eclipse, you can de de develop a module of an application in C, another one in Java, another one in Python, and at the end, you define how they are combined by a, a mechanism for, for building, building it. And we found that it would be very interesting precisely to support a common client controller platform for different control for, for different control frameworks. So we started working with uh, with different fold light, uh, Ryu, Open Daylight. This ended being an Open Daylight project. Now it's part of the uh, bottom uh, distribution. And the important thing here is that we have found we started this two years ago and proved that we were real visionaries because. This allows to manage 5G slices. These are 5G slices. And you can use, you can use whatever, the controller. If you are running, um, uh, you're running an avionics system for whatever, you can run your, pre your preferred controller, the one that you feel like, and someone else can run another controller, and they will be uh, the conflicts and the, uh, and the priorities will be assigned by the, by the core. That, by the way, is now open daylight because it's what like, we, we, we felt like that. But it's what is providing, and this would be the operator, and this would be the, uh, the slicer. And this is one of the plans that we have is that with, uh, the project finishes this year, and it is to bring it to the uh, 5G and uh, well, revamp it with a, with a different way of naming. We're not talking about applications or controls. Our client controller platform, we're talking about slice controller and things like that, but we are, that's one of them. Basically, more marketing than anything else. Well, no. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, we have to consider here, here we have not considered, for example, at all, radio. And radio is essential. And we have to consider radio as well. So there are a few challenges, but at least the seeds are some. Intent, which is the, the next uh, big word that is so in common. Uh, and this is, this is the NetID uh, user interface. Basically, what's it, what is Intent about? Intent, uh, many people have been discussing about Intent, and, and again, this reminds me a little bit what happened so, some time ago in the, uh, in the IT world, about how you could program. And that was very, very, uh, I remember reading several papers about natural programming and using plain English or whatever other language for programming the uh, uh, computers, etc., and I don't know if you remember, there was a scene in which uh, Scotty from Star Trek tries to use the uh, computer by addressing it. Mm -hmm. And then what's, uh, uh, a computer of, of these days. Somebody says, no, 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 that doesn't understand. Come on, the, the computer cannot understand me. That, that was this idea that you could program by expressing what you wanted. This is something that is happening right now, which is, I would say, well, networking is a much more limited environment. It's true that uh, the, the general sp uh, uh, space of computing is very, is very general. Here, probably, we're talking about something, uh, uh, something more uh, restricted. But again, thinking that you can say literally, literally what I want to do. And the example is that I want to connect very fast and translate that into into real. Uh, uh, into something uh, is a little bit going too far in my view. The important thing here is that if we found 
if, if we find a sound mathematical model that basically will be derived from, from graph theory, and we find a way of expressing those uh, uh, requests over that sound mathematical, mathematical model, then we will be very close to this. And let's separate what I want to do from uh, uh, how I need to do it. Think about, and let me uh, use again the analogy of the databases. Think about SQL. SQL is based on a sound mathematical model that is, um, is a relational, relational algebra and relational calculus. And what you do is that you express properties about the data, what you want to, to do with the data, and what you, how you will process the data. You don't care how the data is presented, you don't care where it has been stored, you don't care about anything. You just have a conceptual view of the data and you manipulate it. The idea would be the same. You have a conceptual view of the network and you manipulate it. That would be intent. I mean, SQL right now is intent of a data. The idea would be to have something that would be intent of a network that would be, for example, for sure going a step forward in instruction. Think about that. What you want to do with the network would be inside the program, not as a separate program. You'll be part of the program. At the same time, you're creating something, you will be telling what to do. Ah, well, I want to mention this. To mention Something again, when you're thinking in terms of uh, of the uh, of uh, networks and why should I need to program the network? Something that is really it has been a real well, has been a, a blessing in some in some senses and a curse in others are the sockets. We use that the only interface to the network is a socket. You open a socket to drop things on the socket to read things on the socket. The problem is that those sockets are based on one single protocol that is TCP that is very well adapted for certain things and not so well adapted for many other things. It's very well adapted for a client to server connection, for uh, um, <coughs> slow-paced connection like email, like a, term, a remote terminal, but it's not well adapted for video or for things like that. And not right now, the only way of everything, everybody is using TCP, and the only reason why it's working is because something that is called more slow that we have kept, I mean, why not, for the humanity has kept making faster and faster and faster processors, bigger and bigger and bigger memories, falling rubbers of buffers and all the like, so we can adapt something that was thought for a remote connection to a terminal at, uh, I don't know, a few kilobits per second into something that is able to deliver people. But the cost of doing so is very high and it's full of hacks. And the proofs of that is that things are not so stable. I think what happened recently with the, uh, with the dynamic DNS, that is another hack on top of the DNS that is a not well-conceived centralized database. That's, that's the problem, and, and precisely the point here is that you could, we could be able to do whatever we want, to define the protocol. Define a, defining a protocol is not so complicated. The protocol is a small state machine, and you can, why not, should you use your own protocol for to optimize your application. So that, that's what I wanted to say, but intent precisely will provide something that is very important as well, it, and we will make converge SDN and MFD is precisely a common <coughs> interface for SDN uh, controllers and FD management. So the idea is that you would say, I want this, and when I want this, I would translate into deploying 1,000 machines and connecting them in a, in a different, in a particular way. Oof. Uh, I, I have a question. Um, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. Uh, um, you talked about defining your own protocols, but um, if we look at how the SD and NFP is going, we are only talking about up until layer three, uh, because up and above beyond the application layers, they will try and manage themselves, uh, because most of the management and control being done up until layer 3 on the current networks. So, I mean, how will the upper layers deal with it? Because a lot of the applications, they depend on, like, layer 4, uh, where you have your TCP. A uh, lot of the applications, they depend on the reliability TCP offers. So, if you are if you are modifying your protocol, how will we, uh, how will that relate to, like, the upper layers? The point is precisely whether you need that relay in many applications. I mean, currently, uh, as I said before, uh, applications are used to use sockets. You open the sockets, you, you drop things, and you... 
Um, whatever you drop there will, will reach the other the other end at the set amount. In the other, in the other you drop. But probably in some, in some cases, and, and again, this is about opening your mind and thinking in some different terms. For example, when it comes to the video, you don't need that. You can afford losing losing frames. What you cannot afford is precisely that to deliver you the things in order, they uh, you, you suffer a delay that is not fixed. It's much more efficient the other way around. But what happens? You have TCP, so you go for it and you make a hack to, to make things happen. And to, so the point is that you can think in terms that you have something that is can be more than a solution. That's the point. Whether you deliver a, I mean, <coughs> dealing with the, the, uh, in, the internals of data probably would be too much for the network. But it's feasible as well to drop the uh, the kind of uh, of network function that you feel like. I come from precisely from uh, of, uh, building here in the uh, in Barcelona, meeting some guys that are working on something that is called Niti. Niti is a uh, is an anonymization mechanism for, for closing the web. And what we are doing when we are discussing is about relying on this to make it more flexible. Right now it's a cloud application, but it's a cloud application that is working at the HTTP <coughs> level. What we want to make it is something that ha works. If, if we can, not only at the IP level, we want to make it work at the, at the access protocol level. We, we are discussing about that. You can play. The point is that I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying that it's going to, to happen tomorrow. I'm not saying that probably. But it's, it's something that is a start thinking that you can do different things. Well, I, I uh, <coughs> let me go. This is about how virtualization should be done the right way. There is a virtualizing boxes that is taking, uh, which is what is happening now many vendors. I think the only thing is that they, I have a box, I have a router, let's make a, a view router. Let make, let's put the whole router in a virtual machine and deploy it. This is wrong and what we believe is that we should go in the way in which you have horizontal virtualization, identify functions and deploy them on the, on the, on the, on the cloud and combine them. And for this, for certain of these functions, something like the uh, uh, new uh, um, function like uh, uh, microservices and containers, etc., would be very interesting. Again, this is something that is completely open. Uh, you are finishing, uh, uh, this is something that is a matter for very, very interesting researchers that are feeling like, like this. And, uh, well, at the end, what you have is uh, something that I will try to insist very much in the system. Continue. Forget about having. Even forget about the layers. Layers are there. <laughs> and I'm serious about that. <laughs> the separation of layers is, is uh, in, among other things, is thought in, in, in terms precisely of what you could achieve or not achieve with the different kind of boxes and the different kind of uh, processes. Think that now what you will have is a flow of data that you will, I mean, for sure, you will structure them as packets because it's apparently it's the most natural way of doing so. Fine. But not necessarily everything will stop related to. There is a, a very interesting work on going, which is called PIF. Originally it was called POF, and now it's called PIF. <laughs> POF is what was a protocol oblivious for wordings, and now they call it protocol in the game. So yes, there is a, a, a protocol <coughs> language that is called PIF4 uh, that precisely deals with expressing uh, matching rules for packets and what to do with them. And when you start with that, you don't care about things. These are a couple of examples that will run very, 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 very fast. This is what we are doing in Brazil right now, as we started, which is about taking everything that you have to have at home and bringing it to our cloud. Why? Because it's much easier. I mean, instead of having a router, instead of having your, your set of box, whatever, you have just a switch. Mm. And your connection to, to, the, uh, to the fiber, and you have layered to visibility. It's much easier. Reduce, as I said, reduce what they call the track roads, the, the, um, the uh, trips from technicians to maintain the, uh, the home environment, and allows for additional uh, for additional services that we are figuring with this uh, virtual high service platform, like for example security, like for example um, uh, optimi uh, certain optimizations. Think about I, I, I work from home and I would really pay for having some way of quarantine when I have a, a video conference with my management. I would, I would pay for having a, an enhanced uh, service. By only by the moment. I pay for that, I pay for that. You know, a uh, couple of euros per hour or something like that, I would be happy. And, and very likely, Telefonica would be happy because it would be 
Yes, no. Something that uh, I, I won't go, I, I will uh, send a bit the, uh, the slides and you will have to be able to see. But something that we have found very curious, curious is when, when you start thinking virtual, and this is a very coarse grain virtualization, you know, we, we have still have a DHCP, we have a router, we have a NAT. When you start thinking virtual, things that are normally most, the, the most unthinkable that you can forget about this piece of thing, this thing, or even uh, or even the, on, the, on the part of the, uh, of the optical uh, adaptation, they become redundant. You don't need that. Originally, the architecture was, hey, we need something that is a router here. But you start thinking that what you have is functions that you put here and there and there. What you need is physical part, you cannot avoid it, but the rest, you put it on wherever. So we were thinking about creating a V, uh, v RAS. Maybe somebody convinces my management that the VBRAS is the way to go because it's the way in which it will make money. But we, I'm sure we have demonstrated that they are not at all. Security <coughs> is something that we are trying to, and we, we have made some demonstration of, uh, of uh, elastic security, where we <coughs> that we have, and it was our first demonstration of that anything was feasible. The idea is that instead of having what is called the packet inspection, that is something that they don't like very much, but anyway, it's something that we do. We're just analyzing the traffic flows. That's very demanding in terms of uh, resources, but what, if you split the analysis and what you deal with metadata and other data, you can uh, make things much in a much more feasible way. And this was, this is what uh, some colleagues of mine started to work on this uh, some time ago, and they proved that they could uh, follow some campaigns of our marketing guys at one hundredth the price of a normal appliance. And that was encouraged our management to, to uh, allow us to reach it. Uh, basically, this is about uh, sec uh, um, <coughs> uniform security is that about you can choose the security services you want and run into a virtualized environment. And you can choose, I mean, saying I want this, I want this, I want this, put it here and make this uh, Bouncer guy take care of uh, something that is the net, the network device that takes care of running your, your system inside and providing this. This is something that we, in which uh, we are working among others with the UBC. This is a project called Secure. And the, uh, we have recently, we went to Palma and Mallorca to demonstrate this in a running environment in the, uh, with the uh, um, Tomo. Um, uh, on a Wi-Fi they have on the, on the beach. So it's running, and we are thinking about going on it. Well, basically, 5G, when it comes to 5G, this is just defined 5G, motivating 5G, 5G is very important, 5G and more on things. It is very relevant because it allows me to explain what I do very easily. In the past, people ask you, what do you do? You say, what I do? What I'm doing, I am virtualizing networks. I'm making research in networks. You know, people look at you like <laughs> Why don't you tell me that you sell vegetables and that you're a, a doctor and you, and you do things that you know, now you say, I'm doing 5G. Hey, everybody knows what it is. I mean, well, everybody can grab what it is. You know, to say, to, to see the 4G, how, how fast it is, 5G will be much better. And then you gain a lot of respect. <laughs> something really important. So apart from that, 5G is about exactly high uh, uh, traffic profiles that have uh, specific uh, uh, requirements is about trying to address what are called verticals that are uh, being identified as sectors that will benefit of, of, this, um, of, uh, of this transformation and to manage, with something that is very important, is to manage to be a change of scale in the network. So we will be able to deal with a billion of devices, trillions of connections, trillions of data that will be moving around in, a, in an affordable and sustainable way without running out of, first, money, the operators, that would be a real bad thing, and second, physical resources, if you think, that things cannot grow forever. Information may grow, may grow much faster than our physical ability to manage it. And we have to find ways of dealing with the information the same way the information is. So these are the essential requirements. As you can see, everything is going to be much faster, much bigger, uh, much, uh, much uh, more dense, much more complicated. 
And uh, there are the typical uh, requirements from the verticals. Basically, I want a better network and much higher cheaper. But apart from that, if you want more, more this, uh, you know, combinations for, for material, long battery life, that's essential if you have a really sort of thing. Uh, business models, for sure. That's because we are opening, we are opening the door to many different, uh, different kind of uh, business models in which the idea of having a monolithic operator is, is over. And this is something I try to insist my company as well, that we should start learning. And this is something that, have you heard about Telexius, right? There's a Telsius, the company that is owning the infrastructure that Telefonica was about to, to go they bring to, uh, uh, to the stock exchange and it's, they stopped because of the prices and all that. Apart from the fact that Telefonica did the money, that is true, there is a strategic move there about the possibility. Right now we are talking about the physical, the hard physical infrastructure. We're talking about uh, towers, we're talking about antennas, we're talking about uh, uh, undersea cables. But the idea, and this is something that we have discussed, is precisely whether it would make sense in the future that they will be running our data centers and other, other companies will be running their functions on the types of the things. So at the end, it looks like the management is starting to think. This is something that could be even dangerous. Well, this is when it comes to the, uh, to the slice, and this is the concept of slice and that slice, and to make a slicing something that is essential is an homogeneous infrastructure that has a, a consistent control because otherwise you cannot slice. It's the same that you have a slice at the end. It's the same of a. Which is the name, it's, it's the same as a, as a as a root processing when you're talking in terms of root. And this is just for your reference. This is something that has been proposed by the uh, uh, by the five GBPP. Precisely, this is the architecture in which you have something that mediates. This is infrastructure. Network functions, SDN, network functions, SDN. So it's, uh, as I said before, at least two layers of recursion seem a reasonable approach for slicing. And let me say, all this is soft. Infrastructure is only here. Pieces, boxes, things are only here. The rest is soft. And they may be running on top of the same infrastructure, but the access is different. And just to finish. Um, this is a proposal of an architecture that we made uh, some time ago, precisely. And here, the important thing, apart from the idea that you will have a very distributed, uh, some very distributed data centers for things that have to be uh, mostly with the forwarding plane, because they have to be close. You are subject, we are subject to physical loads. You cannot uh, force, well, there is no proof that you can, you can go faster than the speed of light, for example. So you have to, to have things close to the, uh, to the users. While you can consolidate all the other elements in a big data centers are located wherever you want. Apart from that, something that is very important is this. Right now, operators run completely separated networks. Up to when you are, are rich here, they, they converge. But the rest are completely separated. Architecture are a disparate, um, uh, uh, mechanisms for, for, uh, for access, for accessing the, uh, the core are different. You have the GTP, the protocol that is uh, enabled, for example, through GTP, but you're using, we are using uh, is the, uh, PP, no, it's PPTP. Is the, uh, what is using the fixed lines in the, uh, in the, in the ADSL? It's PPTP, PPPOE, it's a big zone, yes, PPPOE, things like that. They are completely separated. Our idea, and what we are trying to do is this asset, Think that the only thing that will be here will be the last. We, we are used to, well, we, people used to talk about the last mile. We will be talking about if we keep the imperial way, the, the last yard, or the last meter, if you like. <laughs> so the only difference would be in the access. The rest should be the same. There is no difference. At the end, we have converged and we will have a. a and that's a challenge, and I doubt that I will not retire before I see this happening. I mean, widespread. <laughs> Because things happen slowly, but at least the vision is there. And this is the last one. Just uh, well, to uh, hoping that I'm not being very boring. In the spite of the 30 slides of excitement, <coughs> uh, 33 actually. Uh, the uh, the idea is that uh, we are we, we are witnessing something that is a paradigm shift. We're, we're changing the way in which we're thinking about the whole thing. This is the important message 
things are changing. There are many, and we're starting to we're starting to scratch the surface. There are many things ahead. There are many opportunities, not only for research. I would say that there are many opportunities for employment, for sure, and for and for uh, and for starting uh, uh, bringing new ideas and, and making money out of them, and, and, and making uh, well at the same time making making uh, making uh, people happier. And that uh, something that I heard some time ago uh, to uh, someone in uh, one of the inventors of all this stuff of uh, OpenFlow, etc., is that uh, he was uh, he was really glad of uh, having. He, he told us that one of the things he had noticed since they started going with OpenFlow was that the people that were going to their classes, the people that were going to the uh, networking um, uh, matters, have changed. I have changed their, their, their minds because for quite a while networking was something that was about configuring, optimizing a little bit of math, of math and a little bit of protocols and convergence, etc. Now you can do hacking. You can do almost whatever you want if you're there. I'm not saying that you will be successful, but you can try it before you cannot. And, and, and it was very, very, uh, very, very graphic when saying, well, networking is sexy again. And this is what I would like you to uh, to bring on. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.